All right, so this is going to be a crash course on how to remove the hard drive um, from this computer to another one. So basically, you have a server in your rack that looks just like this. Um, most likely, they're labeled FS1 and FS2. The label would be here. Um, you want to make sure that you want to ensure that all connections from the back of the server have been removed. And then, when you come to the front of your rack, you want to take off the four screws. And when you're done with that, you're just going to pull the server out of your rack. Um, it's best to just do either one at a time, or if you have an area that you can work on both, uh, you can put them side by side, that would be great. So what we're going to do now is remove the hard drive. So with the Phillips head screwdriver, you want to use one with a decent point to it. You don't want to use a thick one or it will not work. You're going to take off the side screws first. You have to apply some pressure in the beginning because you don't want to strip the screws. Make sure you save them. Okay, now you're just going to open up the lid, just put your hands on top, apply some pressure, and it's just going to go back like so, and just pull the top off. <clears throat> now you want to look, but go back to the server on its left hand side, and you'll see the hard drive is located inside here. There's two screws located on the side of the server. We want to take these two screws off first. So using the same Phillips head screwdriver. I'll get that one later. Okay. And we're going to look in the inside, and you have a red SATA cable plugged into the board right here. It's the closest to the cage. We're going to disconnect that. And over here, we're going to remove the other cable from the other side. You might have some glue on here. If so, you can simply just peel it off. I don't on this cable. But I do, however, have some on the power cable. I'm just using my nail, I'm able to get it off. You could use a razor, but I'd rather not. And then just wiggle it around, and you can pull it off like so. This power cable will just hang here for the time being. And if you want, you can just rip off the access glue. We don't need that. When the power cable has been removed, <coughs> There's two screws located on the back of this cage bracket, right here. We're going to remove those screws right now. Just slowly slide it up. Take the screws off the cage, put them in a safe spot, and this is the hard drive. We want to leave it inside the cage, but if you want to do it, you could put a post-it note on there, label it, whatever server you took it out of, so if it's FS2, just write FS2, put that aside, do the same process on the other server, and putting it back is simply going to be the same way. So we're going to put the cage back in, line it up with the holes that are in the inside. I would put these screws in first. And there's a tight fit back here.
Yes, I want to make sure you definitely put the screws back. We don't want to leave them just hanging out. Okay, we're going to put the power cable in first. You kind of have to put it above it and then just pushes down so, and it's going to be tight against the fan, but it will fit back in. It is there. And we're going to put the SATA cable back on. The cable has a zip tie on it. That's going to go on the end on the board right here. So you just plug it back into the motherboard. Remember, it's the connection closest to the cage. And we're going to come in the back. Plug it back in the SATA drive. We're going to put these screws back on in the front. It is the same size screws that's on the outside of the case. Top back on, and you're gonna put your other screws back on this side and this side. Take it back to the rack, put it back in. Four screws. Make sure your cables are all plugged in, and once you're good to go, simply hit the power button.